everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verdi. I have been a little bit absent for a while, so sorry about that, but I had quite a bad accident where I tripped when I was reading and fell face first um, onto a wooden sleeper and sort of really damaged my face. I've still got a bit of bruising and swelling, but I didn't break any teeth. Um, I didn't hurt my jaw, so I'm really pleased about that. <laughs> I just look on the bright side. Um, anyway, today we're going to be sowing wallflowers, and these are also, their Latin name is Arisimum, and these are beautiful, um, often very bright flowers that come into their own in spring, look great with tulips, and they flower all summer long. You can get um, perennial versions and you, you can also get biennial versions. Wallflowers come into their own in the spring, um, especially if you can get them flowering at the same time as tulips, but they also flower all summer long and um, mine are still flowering now in August and looking wonderful. A really good time to start thinking about uh, sowing them so that they flower next year is around this time, which is August here in the UK. Obviously it depends, you know, where you live in the world and what your temperatures are like. See, you can sow into cell trays, which is what I've got here, or just into a garden pot, or you can sow these outside. If you can protect the seeds, um, you know, from massive downpours that would just wash your seeds away, um, then do sow them outside. I like to sow them in cell trays or pots because then I can protect them. If I know it's gonna rain, I can just um, bring them under cover a little bit. Um, wallflower seeds do need light to germinate, so you can cover them with a sprinkling of compost or vermiculite, but um, don't cover them completely and don't leave them in the dark. You want to make sure that there is light around. So today I'm going to be sowing ivory white. I mean, that speaks for itself. I'm going to sow quite a few of those because they're really handy to have. And I'm also sowing primrose bedder, which is obviously a more primrosy colour, so not quite as white. It's a little bit softer. And then I'm going to be sowing two from the Sugar Rush series. Uh, these are F1 hybrids, and I'm sowing Sugar Rush red. Looking forward to that because I think that would go really well with some of my tulips. And I'm sowing Sugar Rush Purple Bicolor, which I also think will look really good with like maybe a paler pink tulip. And then I'm sowing Persian Carpet, which is absolutely glorious. And I'm also sowing Scarlet Bedder, bright red. And yeah, so those are the six varieties that I'm sowing today. And I'm just going to show you how I do it. So um, what I do is I fill my seed tray with compost and I use a peat free compost. The one I like to use is the Melcourt Silver Grey peat free compost. If you've watched my videos before you'll know that this is the one I prefer because it's a really nice consistency and I've had really good results with it. Um, this is not an ad, it's just the one that I like. And don't forget um, to write plant labels and when you write your labels, if you're sowing seeds, it's really handy to write the date that you uh, sowed the seeds on the back because uh, then you, you'll know um, whether your seeds are germinating or not. So um, the seeds for Arisimum, wallflowers, uh, tend to germinate in seven to 14 days. Obviously some seeds might take a little bit longer, but that's sort of what you're looking at, is uh, one to two weeks you should start to see signs of life. So I'm just going to fill the tray now with the peat-free compost. I don't pre-moisten my compost, but by all means do do that if that's what you like to do. But I like to bottle water afterwards just by sticking them in a tray of water and I'll show you that. And then I'm just going to label each cell and sow the seeds. We've had some really high temperatures here in the UK and the wallflowers just wouldn't have germinated in that kind of heat. The seeds like to germinate when it's about 20 degrees, somewhere around there. So if it's hotter than that, I would definitely keep them um, in light but out of direct sunlight. You don't want them to be baking or anything like that. And I wouldn't try and sow them in a greenhouse in the middle of summer because it's just gonna be too hot for those seeds to germinate. So um, maybe leave it until a little bit later or sow them much earlier in the year, maybe in spring. I'm 
going to do now is sprinkle some vermiculite over the top. I like vermiculite because it will let the light through and I don't have to worry about you know my compost being too thick if I was to sprinkle compost on top. So vermiculite is it's a natural substance and it's really light in texture but it also helps prevent algae growth so I like to sprinkle vermiculite on top of some of my seed trays. So by all means, if you want to sow your seeds directly in the ground outside, then um, do go ahead and do that. You'll need to prepare your soil. So you'll need to um, make sure that it's weeded and then rake it to a fine tilth, which basically just means make sure that it's not all clumpy and sort of try and level it as much as you can. Don't compact it. Obviously, we don't want compacted soil. And then sprinkle your seeds. If you scatter them in sort of a random pattern, then that works quite well, but it's going to be harder to tell what's a weed seedling and what is actually one of your wallflower, wallflower seedlings. And so it'll just make it harder to know what to weed and what not to. If you sow them in a straight line, then it's often a lot easier to get rid of your weed seedlings and just leave the seedlings that you want um, and then just very very lightly cover them with compost and if you're sowing them where they're going to stay in the future then you'll want to sow them in a sunny spot but again wait until it's a little bit cooler maybe because um, if it's really hot at the moment your seeds won't germinate so this is another reason why I like to sow in cells because I can regulate the temperature and I can regulate how much sun they're getting and I just find it um, a lot more successful to sow in seed trays but you really don't have to you can sprinkle these outside if you want to so now that I've sown all my seeds I'm going to go and put these trays into a larger tray filled with water and just let the water um, be absorbed through capillary action into the compost and that will dampen the seeds and then I'm going to put them in my cold frames. The advantage of my cold frames and the reason that I like my cold frames at this time of year is that they have lids so I can protect them from any dampers that we have but they're also basically outside so I just take you know open them up take the lids off during the day and then they are getting their natural germination um, climate. If you don't have a cold frame then you can just leave your seed trays outside or your pots whatever you've sown into and just um, you know let nature take its course but if it is going to be a massive downpour or thunderstorm or something I would protect them because otherwise they'll just get washed away until they've germinated. Once they've germinated they're going to be uh, quite robust and you don't have to worry about protecting them so much. I hope you found this interesting and useful if you wanted to sow some wallflowers do give it a go because they really do bring that wonderful splash of colour and being perennial they're just going to come back year after year uh, don't forget to deadhead them throughout the season because then you'll get even more blooms and uh, yeah that's it thank you so much for watching I'll see you all next time